Hello, Internet, and welcome to my live reaction for Fairy Tale 100 Years Quest, Chapter 39? 39? Um, yeah, 39. Uh, when we last left our heroes, uh, things were going pretty well for most of them. Uh, Natsu had found a way uh, to fight Wraith. Uh, now that he is a thought projection, uh, he can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Wraith, who is also a thought projection slash ghost kind of thing. Uh, and he can walk through walls now, so he's not destroying things. Uh, but Wraith possessed Makarov, uh, so now Natsu has to fight the Wraith possessed Makarov. Uh, meanwhile, Lucy seems to have found out a way uh, to break Toka's control over uh, the rest, all of Fairy Tale. Um, but she needs Kana's help to do it, who is also controlled by Toka right now, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, and Loxus seems to have Kyria on the ropes, but Kyria does seem kind of confident uh, that she can turn the tables on him. Uh, so yeah, let's jump right on into chapter 39, Cocoon Dragon Cuckoo. Our picture here is um, the the Sot guy from from Lania Scale, I think Toby is his name. Uh, for some reason, on the toilet, completely naked. Um, and we see that he's freaking out because he is, does not have any toilet paper, despite the fact there's a whole bunch of toilet paper right behind him. Uh, so yeah, it's a little funny gag. Uh, anyway... But we, we pick up at the Right Shoulder Church, uh, where I think Nabal is the creepy spider guy's name is. Uh, we see Max and I think that's Warren? It's either Warren or the guy who can never decide uh, where he want, where he want, what job he wants to do. Anyway, uh, Wendy is still trapped in a cocoon. How can she win against a strong enemy like Nabal? Uh, we see that Wendy is like, when we last left Wendy, she had like knocked her limbs out of the cocoon. So she can now like fight, even if she's, you know... In a cocoon, this one moves, though she all wrapped up. Wendy, you... what dragon are you? I am the sky dragon, a sky dragon slayer. No, you cocoon dragon. And she's like, what? Cuckoo. So that's where our chapter title comes from. I'm Wendy. Get wrapped one more time. And he like spins out his web to attack Wendy. The same move won't work again, and she, like, rolls away from it in the cocoon. Cuckoo rolled! Uh, and Carla's just, like, so done with Nabal's bullshit. Uh, and Wendy rolls and jumps over Nabal. Sky dragons! Claw! And she, like, kicks Nabal in the head. He, like, you know, comes down. He's, like, flat on the, f on the floor. Now the final blow! Uh, but Nabal does some kind of web thing out of his finger, uh, that comes towards Wendy. Um, or not, maybe? Um, so let, let me try to parse together what's... Oh, I think what's going on is he's using the web to jump over to the orb. Uh, and he, he's got the orb now. Cuckoo, interesting. That why me not eat you now. Uh, and Wendy, like, is shocked. Me do real goal. Oh no, the orb! Round and round. Boom! And he shattered the orb. Uh, and everyone, Wendy is shocked. Carla angry. Uh, Nabal grins. Hee hee. And we see this like shake go over in the city. Uh, and Toka just kind of is like standing there placidly. Everyone else is kind of panicking. The second orb has been destroyed. Three remain. Then the wood dragon god Alderon will lose his power. Only three more. Who? Where was the first orb destroyed? Um, trying to remember. It's not, it's not where Lox and Kyria are. Um, is it where, was Gijila, I feel like Gijila was at one, of, no, he wasn't at one at first. I don't remember. I don't remember where the first, uh, orb was. Either way, there are only three left. Um, and we see Lox and Kyria feel that in their church, too. What's with this shaking? An orb's been destroyed, huh? That makes three orbs left, and one of them is here. Uh, and Kyria kind of glares at him. What are you planning to do by weakening Alderaan? We will wipe him out in order to fight the rest of the dragon gods. The white wizard's p plan is to steal the power of the wood dragon god. I see. Our objective is to weaken Alderaan so we can eat him. Our objectives might be different, but we both have the same means. Seems so. Then what are we doing, fighting with the orb right in front of us? You started it, though. That's right, because you look like you taste so good. Perfect for an appetizer. And she licks her lips and is ready to like start the fight again. 
Uh, meanwhile, uh, we cut back to Urza, who, when we last left her, was still being bridal carried by Jalal, while Loxus and Kyria are fighting. Now's the best time to take the orb. Still. And she's been bound to a tree um, by what looks like rune magic, but I don't think Jalal has access to that. It reminds me of, of uh, Freed's runes. Uh, anyway, still, uh, we see Jalal, like, looks over her. This situation. Uh, and Jalal, like, gets real close to her, kind of, like, grins. And Urza is both uncomfortable, um, and blushing. Urza, now is the time for you to turn... For... Now is the time to turn you white. Too close! There's nothing to be afraid of. Stop. Don't. Leave yourself to me. All of you. Jalal. Please undo these bindings. They bring back bad memories. Uh, we see Jalal flashes back to uh, when they were slaves in the Tower of Heaven. I want to put these hands on your shoulders. I want to touch your cheek. Urza. Uh, and Jalal undoes it uh, with that appeal to um, his affection for her. Sorry. I won't do that again. Um, and is Urza taking off the bandages around her boobs? Uh, yes, she is, uh, because Jalal notices that and starts freaking out. W what are you, Urza? Uh, and then she uses the, the, the bandages to bind Jalal. Now it's time for you to get bound! Oh! That's good, I'll take on all of you. Now come, I'm always ready. Alright, I guess Jalal has a, has a BDSM kink. No, that's not it! Just stay like that for a while. And she requips into, like, a, her normal, like, armor suit. I see. I'm being teased, right? I have to hurry back to the church. Uh, and then we cut back to Natsu and Wraith Makarov. Now that I think about it, I've never fought seriously against Gramps. You should not think of me as an acquaintance. This old man's magic is combined with mine. And it has given birth to unrivaled power. And he uses uh, Makarov's, you know, fist-enhancing thing and just decks Natsu. Whoa! Uh, and he was, like, flying into a building. That hurts! And just earlier, I was passing through Waltz. Hmm? Hey, wait. And he, uh, that reminds me of something. Hey, wait. How did you land a hit on me if I'm a ghost? Even though my real body couldn't attack you. We're not on the same level in the first place. I am a ghost. And strictly speaking, you are a thought projection. Whether or not my attacks connect with solid objects is decided from my point of view. I don't get it, but it sounds unfair. Uh, I'm not sure I get that I've... So he, what he's saying is... Is that... Um, whether his attacks connect with solid objects doesn't make sense for the situation, because Natsu isn't a solid object right now. Um, but anyway. No. You also unconsciously decided to make contact from your point of view. By nature, an ethereal body cannot touch anything. But you managed to hit the cat that I possessed. So you could also hit this old man if you felt like it. Um, so I, I guess that all thought projections can decide what they can make contact with, which I guess makes sense as to how Seagrain, or Jalal as Seagrain, was able to function for so long. Um, though also this seems to be a different kind of magic than, than Jalal's thought projection, because Jalal was still conscious when Seagrain was running around, um, and Natsu is not, so I don't know. Uh, anyway, Natsu gets up from the rubble. I don't quite get if being a ghost is handy or not. Uh, and uh, Wraith like, looks down at Makarov. That being said, who is this old man? This is a synchro raid I've never experienced before. Grams is the master of my guild. A guild master. That explains the enormous magic power. And judging from his age, he might have seen the abyss of death in all his experiences. Still, with just that, the synchro raid is... Uh, and Wraith stops. Wait, does this mean he also fulfilled the third condition? A blood relative. This old man. Does he have some relation with me? Wraith and Makarov might be related by blood? Okay. Toss your theories in. Um, my guess- So what do we know about Wraith's family? We know that Wraith at least believes that they're dead. So my first, my first thought at, um, going both by Wraith's age, um, and a relation to Makarov is, 
how long has it been since Ivan left Fairy Tale? Um, because it's definitely he had definitely been gone for some time. Like I think Loxus was like a child when Ivan left, right? So I'm I'm not if the timeline adds up. My guess is Ivan had another son after he left Fairy Tale, and that's Wraith. Um. Whether or not Wraith was his original name, or if he picked up the name Wraith after dying, um, is kind of unclear at the moment. But my guess is he's going to end up being um, another son of Ivan, who is uh, with an another mother from Loxus's. Uh, he's not Loxus's secret brother, he's a half-brother. Uh, that's my best guess. Um, you know, that, that just kind of all tracks to me. I don't believe Makarov's had another son in the past 20 years or so, or however old Wraith is. Um, so my guess is, he is, uh, unless Wraith has been dead for a long time, which I don't know if they've specified that that's the case, or that that's not the case. In which case, he could be Makarov's son? Um, that died at some point and was never really brought up because there was no need to bring him up, maybe? I'm not sure. Um, I don't know. I, I don't think the story's ever said that Ivan was an only child. Uh, it certainly is not said that Ivan definitely had no kids after he left Fairy Tale, uh, which is still my chief guess. Um, so yeah, the chapter is a good bit of fun. It's pretty fun. Um, even before that final plot twist. Um... And Nabal kind of wins his fight against Wendy. Um, I mean, Wendy is still there to, like, bring him down eventually, but she failed to protect the orb. Nabal has destroyed the orb, uh, and Alderaan is that much closer to being uh, brought down by both both Diabolos and uh, Toka. Um, so, yeah, that went down real fast. Um... Which means, I'm trying to remember where the three orbs left are. I imagine the, uh, the first orb was the one of the church that um, Natsu and the gang first went to, where they found uh, the Whiteout Fairy Tale. Because, um, you know, that was owned by Fairy Tale, and the gang ran away. Um, so that's my best guess there. Um, and then, Kira, we see that Kiri doesn't really cares more about fighting Loxus than she cares about her mission. Uh, so we'll see what'll happen when Urza returns to that fight probably next week. Um, and then, yeah, I, I really love this Urza moment. Um, just seeing, like, Urza... This whole... The whole thing with Whiteout Jalal has been a lot of um, Urza manipulating Jalal's love for her uh, to get ahead, uh, which is a lot of fun... Of a fun conflict. Um... And I'm very glad we don't have to run around with Topless Urza for a while, because she can change clothes at will. Um, also interesting thing, that I'm not quite sure... I'm trying to remember the exact logistics of Requipping. Um, is it that she has all the clothes in Hammerspace, or are the clothes formed by her magic? Because I I'm guessing it's the former, because... Her clothes that are now binding Jalal stay after she requips out of them. Um, so I'm guessing I'm guessing they are just like hammer space or something. Um, and then yeah, Wraith is probably Ivan's other son. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of things going on here. A lot of them are all really fun, uh, really good, or just kind of getting things set up for future good things. In the case of Locus and Kyria. Uh, so yeah, that's really all I have to say for this week's chapter. Hope you all enjoyed the chapter and the video itself. If you did, don't forget to me a like or subscribe or, you know, do whatever makes you happy, you know? And remember, your life is your own, okay? Bye!